Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome my friends to a new episode in uh, Jesus is our healer. This is your pastor Yeti. Our savior and our healer. Jesus didn't endure that scorching in vain. He took the stripes so we would place our faith in what he did for us and receive our healing. But we have to believe it. Why would Jesus willingly subject himself to such horrible treatment? Because it was his Father's will, and it was also Jesus' will to free you from suffering and torment. Jesus' will and the Father's will are 100% the same. The same in purpose, the same in plan, and the same in power. We can't separate healing from Jesus' character from his purpose or from his heart. And healing is not just one of Jesus' functions, that is absolutely who he is. He is a healer and a deliverer. His very name is Jehovah Rapha, which means the God who heals. And how can you separate any person from his name? We have to come to the place where we know that we know that healer is precisely who Jesus is, and that it's his will to heal us. Jesus is no less our healer than he is our savior. Do you remember what Jesus said to the paralyzed man whose friends lowered him through the ceiling? See Luke 5, 17 to 26. And he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. The Pharisees got upset protesting and you can't do that only God can forgive sin they said that to Jesus but Jesus completely unruffled replied which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up and walk in that moment Jesus was both saying and demonstrating you can't see that this man's sins have been forgiven him but it is done. I will now do something that you can see. He will rise up and walk, but one is not greater than the other. I am both savior and healer. The Pharisees didn't believe Jesus had the authority to forgive sins because only God has that authority. So to demonstrate his authority, Jesus healed the man and revealed in that miraculous act that the same divine power coming from the same source both heals and forgives. Jesus' power to heal is the same as his power to save because it is all the testimony of the power in his precious blood. Our minds have to get renewed to that truth so we don't struggle with this thought when our bodies are hurting and Jesus wants us to receive our healing as simply as we received our salvation. So if you find yourself in the middle of a physical battle, whose voice will speak to the loudest in your life, will you take an immovable stance that you are going to finish your course, or are you going to allow it to be aborted prematurely by one of the enemy's attacks? Think of the Apostle Paul, if anyone had an opportunity to be sick it was Paul. Think of all the infection that must have tried to attack his body through his years of ministry. And what about trauma? Over Paul's years of ministry, he was shipwrecked, stoned, beaten, and left for death. See 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. 
What kind of wounds were inflicted on Paul's body that required him to fight the good fight of faith in order to receive his healing? And yet the Apostle Paul didn't die sick. He didn't die rejected. He didn't die sad. And he didn't die unwilling. God's voice was always the loudest in Paul's life. And no matter what, and when the time came, he simply said, it's the appointment time for my departure. I have finished my race. God doesn't want us to come to him and beg for our healing. Hebrews 4.16 tells us that we are to come boldly before his throne. But let's look at the verse that comes right before that one to get a better understanding of what he is telling us. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 God knows that we are weak. He knows that we are made of dust. He understands why we get fearful at times when sickness comes on our bodies. He understands why we might doubt because the son was tempted in all the same ways. Now let's look at that next verse, which reveals the will of God for us. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of the grace, of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.16 So you don't just come into God's presence because it's your religious duty. You approach the throne of the grace of grace because that is the place to come to receive mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need. And God says to come boldly. That means to enter his presence with a full brightness that says, Father, I am your child and I believe that you hear me. I believe that your son Jesus was tempted in the same way I was, yet he didn't sin. He received your forgiveness for my fear and my doubts, and I'm coming boldly to your throne to receive what is already mine through Jesus. And this is what I want on this visit to your throne. What is it you want from the Lord? Be bold. If it is healing and wholeness, tell him, Father, this is what I want. And that is exactly what Hebrews 4.16 says is, telling us to do, we are to come boldly to the throne of grace and receive our Heavenly Father's mercy to help us in our time of need. We have to see this. It's not a religious duty. It's our life in God, and it is not just for someone else. It's just for you and for me. So what was Jesus afflicted with, with every sickness and disease that would ever try to come on you and me? It all came on him first. He carried every pain and every sickness to the cross so we wouldn't have to carry them. In the hour leading up to Calvary and as Jesus hung on the cross, there was so much of his blood spilled and so much ripping of his flesh that he became unrecognizable. The Bible actually says he didn't even look like a man. See Isaiah 52 verse 14. But it was all part of Jesus taking all our sins and all our sickness and infirmities on his own body so that we can live free from all the kept us bound and under Satan's dominion. And what a savior. And indeed, what a plan. And Jesus is your healer. If we doubt, that's fine. If you lose track, everyone lose track. Everyone doubts. But the main thing is that Jesus did it. Jesus finished the job. And it's our job 
to take care of ourselves and also of others, to believe that God sent his only begotten son, to believe the word, scripture, as Jesus spoke as well to his disciples, spoke as well to the people, to the crowd, and spoke as well to the Pharisees who were always on his heels and always criticizing him. That is our life too. But what about scripture that says, come to the throne boldly and ask what you need. As Jesus says, if you believe in me and you stay in me, ask anything. And if you doubt, well, start questioning your doubt. Don't stay with it. Don't come in status quo. Or don't turn in the same circle. Step out of the circle and find your way out and stand firm as Paul did. May God bless you. Blessings. This is your Pastor Yeti.